Hi there, Horace Hinshaw here from the Pacifica Historical Society and the host of the show Footprints of Pacifica. We get together every week to discover and explore the lure and the lore of lovely Pacifica, its character and its characters. The focus of today's show is when and where baseball was king. In the 1950s, baseball and softball were the only organized recreation activities in Pacifica. Games were played at White Field, the site where Alma Heights Christian Academy is located today, adjacent to the Sanchez Adobe. In the 1950s, the site housed four baseball diamonds, and it really wasn't uncommon to see literally hundreds of spectators come out and watch the players. The land was purchased by the Pillar of Fire Church in 1949 with the intent to eventually build a school. The school actually got the green light to build in 1969. However, between 1959 and 1969, the field became a place to socialize, have fun, come out and have picnics, and more importantly, a place to watch our players and young people play baseball and softball. Hundreds of children and adults played on the field that was being leased by the city of Pacifica. In 1869, the field reverted to the Pillar of Fire Church, with the youth baseball leagues and adult softball players having to seek out other places to play. Now here with us tonight, we're happy to have, is a gentleman who was a major player in the birth of Alma High School, Joe Gross, and his son, David Gross, currently the principal of Alma Heights. Thank you both for being here tonight. I've had the pleasure of talking with both these gentlemen over the past uh, six or seven months as I was doing sports research on Pacifica Sports and Alma Heights and White Field. So I've had the pleasure of meeting with them. I probably have bugged them quite a bit in the past six months, but it's been enjoyable. Tonight, we're going to talk about White Field and its place in Pacifica history. Joe, perhaps you can take us to the early history of the purchase of the land by Pillar of Fire Church. I'd be happy to do that. You mentioned uh, 49 as being the year that property was bought by the church. Uh, actually, the land that would become Alma Heights Christian Academy uh, encompasses acreage on both sides of Lindemar Boulevard. And uh, the first building was done on the opposite side from White Field. Uh, the total purchase was done in three different increments, uh, 49, 50, and 51, I believe. And so th those were the early beginnings. And th the reason for the purchase of the property was indeed to establish a, uh, a school and eventually a church. That was the, the idea of those who were involved in that purchase at that time. So. Now, I have a picture that I found in the Pacifica Tribune files. Joe, perhaps you can tell us who these people are here. This was taken in 1960, the best I can recollect. All right. Uh, the gentleman is uh, Dr. Arthur White and his uh, wife Kathleen, and he was the general superintendent at the time the land was purchased. And um, how did they have a place in the history? Did they stay here? Because they told me that the school and the field were named after both of these people. Right. Well, because they were uh, the leaders at the time in the church, uh, I, I wasn't here at that time, so I don't know quite how the name attachment was made, but uh, I think it was in honor of uh, Dr. White because of his interest. And the land was purchased to replace a school at w which was in operation in the city of San Francisco. The idea then was to establish a school more out in the country. And indeed, what would become White Field was Brussels sprouts and artichokes. <laughs> so they, uh, they did get into the country for sure. And these folks here, this was taken in 1970. And perhaps you can tell us where you think it might have been taken. I think it was taken by the, the, one of the first buildings uh, on the opposite side of the building uh, or of, of the boulevard from White Field. And I believe it's by the end of the old, what we call the Academy building now. And if I might, I'll point out yes. uh, Lois Stetson was principal for a number of years at the school. Uh, the young dashing gentleman is uh, George Edsel. <laughs> and uh, he was involved in helping us um, with what would become land purchased from Whitefield to become 
the fire station, which is there now. Next to him was the treasurer from Pillar of Fire in Colorado, and uh, that branch of the church was really uh, most involved in getting, um, in many instances, volunteer laborers to come out and work on the first buildings that were put up. A lot of that was done by volunteer church laborers. Uh, the young fellow there is David's father. Uh, <laughs> next to him, next to him is a, a gentleman <laughs> who uh, pastored a pillar church in Oakland by the name of Wilbur Conkle. He was also involved in establishing schools and missions um, in other countries around the world. And then one of the board members uh, back through that era, William Sunday Sharp. Interesting. Yeah, I found that in the uh, Tribune. So in 1963, you came to Pacifica to assume an administrative role. What was your role actually in the, in the church and school? Right. I, I wasn't uh, really titled as an administrator at that time. I was totally involved in uh, the, not only in teaching, but also in maintenance. And uh, we had far fewer buildings and we had lawns already. And then when uh, the city vacated White Field, why the amount of uh, lawn to be mowed increased dramatically. <laughs> and I was establishing a workforce, uh, namely children. So David ran a riding mower when he was, what, seventh grade? <laughs> and uh, so that, that's part of the uh, chemistry as, as things came along. Um, if you want to know what part I had as the transfer uh, took place, for the property use, why well, I'd be glad to go into that briefly. And we'll go into that shortly then. Okay. That's great. You know, for 10 years, as I said, uh, from 1959 to 1969, the city of Pacifica uh, paid the Pillar of Fire a yearly fee uh, to use the, uh, the property. How much was the fee and under what condition was the le lease uh, arranged? Right. Uh, I wasn't here when that was put into place, but my understanding it was that it was $1 a year simply to make it a legal document. And uh, I used to say a little bit tongue in cheek, well, we never saw the dollar a, a year, but uh, it may have come. You want all the interest from the last 50 years, right? That would be nice, <laughs> that would be nice. In 1969, the, mm -hmm. the issue of property taxes was raised. It appeared that neither the city of Pacifica nor the Pillar of Fire Church had been paying taxes on the property. What happened at that time? When the uh, city gained use of that property for uh, ball fields and recreation, uh, my understanding is that they appealed to the county because of that kind of public use and benefit that the uh, taxes be withdrawn and the county did do that. But then with a, a new county administration toward the end of the 60s, that was reversed and the uh, property taxes were put back on the field. And at that point, uh, the city was pretty much established there with the developed ball fields, but they didn't feel like they wanted to pay taxes on property that did not belong to them. So it was, a, it was kind of a, a, a tight rope there that uh, the city and the church were walking. Uh, the church did not feel happy about paying taxes on property that they were not using. And then in the meantime, the need for that land to expand the school had really materialized and, and was uh, becoming more urgent all the time. So in 1970, you went down to City Hall to begin the process of building a school on yes. the property, but you ran into some stumbling blocks. Uh, what happened? Well, I was a, a, a country bumpkin as, as far as uh, uh, city permits and building permits and all of that. and. I was directed by our church fathers to uh, get a set of plans for a school that had been put up in Los Angeles. And they said, just to take these plans and, and get a permit and uh, we'll see if we can't get started on building down on, on White Field. So I marched in happily to uh, the building department and they said, well, you don't have a use permit, you don't have a development permit. Uh, and I remember feeling like I, I was sinking into the floor. I'd never <laughs> heard about this. and. Uh, and they said, furthermore, you need to talk to the city manager. So I went upstairs and uh, met him. And he said, well, the city has its own plans for the development of White Field. And he reached into a drawer and pulled out a, a, a blueprint, which Horace uh, <laughs> did all of the research and dug this out of some dusty archive somewhere. Uh -huh. and, uh, 
found that uh, a copy of that that I was shown on that first day contacting the city and we'll unfold it here. Let's see, we're upside down, aren't we? So walk us through that. What, what did they tell you that they had planned for this? Uh, well, just to locate it, this is Lindemar Boulevard. And uh, they said, well, the county would like to have a library on Whitefield. And they located that right in the corner. Uh, this would be the Sanchez Adobe uh, across the fence right there. Then they had parking, and here they had tennis courts. And then a mini park out here, which would have uh, extended the county property where they show a comfort station and uh, horseshoe pits. And then kind of a nature trail that would uh, go along the border of San Pedro Creek. And then on the far side, they showed a new location for the fire station. Well, as, as it unfolded, um, indeed the fire station did happen. Everything else there relative to that early plan by the city, which was done independent of the church who owned the property, uh, the only part of that that, uh, as I've already said, was the fire station. And uh, now, interestingly, there is a library, but it's a school library that's very close to the location that had been chosen then. It's just a little bit more to here and the driveway comes in here. So, that's so this is the first time you've actually seen these blueprints since 1970 when I brought them right. to you. And, and I commend you for being <laughs> able to, to dig those out. Well, it's interesting because uh, <coughs> when I was down at the, uh, at the church talking with you, you, you highlighted that this is something that happened. Yes. So I went down to the planning uh, department to ask them to research their files. And, and of course, uh, Mike Crabtree, who is the planning director, was very happy to do so. And he had a staff uh, go through and find it. And lo and behold, they had the permits and everything, but I asked the people, where are the blueprints of these? And nobody could find them. Mm -hmm. And so I said, may I borrow these? And so they let me borrow them, I, I ran through them. And back in the back, the very back, was this blueprint sort of wrapped up and attached <laughs> to the thing. Probably the first time that anybody's looked at them in, what, 50 years probably, yes, yeah. Yes. So it's one of those things. Uh, now, David, you were just a young boy when you came to Pacifica. So what are your early memories of Whitefield? Well, I think and I think, Dave, before we go, I think we have some video that can show what's on the property now as compared to what you thought was going to be there back in 1970. Right. So perhaps they'll, they'll roll the video, we can see that. But, yes. David, what, what's your memories? Well, I remember, uh, I remember climbing around up in the trees and poison oak on the hillside and catching poison oak and having that most of the time. And I remember very vaguely maybe watching a little bit of softball at Whitefield and, and being excited about the school being built and uh, PE classes down at the at uh, Whitefield we'd run a, we'd run over across the street and if the PE teacher wasn't watching hop a fence and and have physical education down there while the building was going up so we were as little kids we were all very tuned into the building program and excited about when we would be able to go to school over there instead of the old building across the street so oh yeah that's a picture taken probably about early 50s right from the about where the uh, fire station is looking out across the fields toward the ocean that'd be taken from about where adobe plaza shopping center is now right looking up seville We've never been able to figure out exactly where that one is. <laughs> Somewhere, I believe, uh, about where the old academy building is, I know that there were large eucalyptus trees that they really had to labor to get pushed out. Eventually, a great big bulldozer came cross country from the quarry and helped to bulldoze some of that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, I cut a piece of one of those ancient trunks off and, and tried it in, in my stove, and it burns and makes wonderful heat. <laughs> so 50-year-old fallen uh, eucalyptus. Works. <laughs> now, where is this now? Well, that'd be, just, that'd be shot from the same place as that old frame building shot. From and this is the wide view of the campus now. Yeah. Or actually, that's Sanchez Adobe right there. Yeah. Right. And, now, and then there is a library at the same spot as on that blueprint. That's kind of interesting, but that's the library for the school and the uh, science wing. 
and then going spanning around yeah. to the field and then the ball fields the softball baseball soccer fields and that looks like a 1960 picture of playing uh, on the um, on the white field there looks like a, older adults are playing there the uh, when you came here david as you you started school and you went on your education did you ever think that you'd come back to be a principal of the school well, i was pretty sure i would not do that oh. yeah I, I i thought that i would probably become the next chris spire on the san francisco giants that was, <laughs> well, that was my plan <laughs> go straight past the minor leagues and <laughs> professional baseball definitely yeah. and that ended then yeah you know i played through high school like a lot of us do and some adult softball after that <laughs> Can you talk briefly about how the firehouse came, uh, uh, Ben? Uh, you needed additional funds at that time. Right. Uh, we needed funds desperately to put up the first building that would go on the property that had been Whitefield. And uh, the city was very anxious to get a better location for the fire station. So um, this is where George Edsel uh, factored in as a realtor and helped us in our negotiations with the city. So indeed, a, a slice of Whitefield was sold to the city, and that, that is where the present fire station sits. It says and, today. And they're wonderful neighbors. That's correct. <laughs> well, you know, today, Alma Heights is, has over 300 students, uh, David, and uh, they're attending school, and you've recently merged with the Church of the Highlands. Perhaps you can tell us what's happening on the campus today, and if, maybe the future. Yeah. Well, some ha things happening currently, we're kind of excited. We're going to have football there in the fall, so... Um, Eight-man tackle football in the high school, so interested to see how that works. We'll be having games on Saturdays in, in September and October. And uh, with the merge with Highlands, we have an athletic director, Natalie Ayers, who's been pushing athletics really, really hard. In fact, right now, we're, I'm missing the junior high championship game as we're doing this, but the Go Alma Heights are playing. And interestingly, they're, the eighth graders are rivals with Highlands, but then um, they may play together on the same team in high school next year. So that's kind of fun because the high schools of the two schools merge, but um, they're separate kin kindergarten to eighth grade schools. Now, you, you still use, we talked about Whitefield, the sports years ago, and yeah. it was for baseball. Really, sports really is big on the campus right now it has not yeah. really left has it yeah there's probably more this year certainly than last year and more last year than the year before it's been growing exponentially there's uh, uh, indoor soccer on the weekends uh, a lot of people been playing that in the gym uh, we have uh, soft we have adult well family softball with a church league in this uh, starting up in August there will be basketball and volleyball camps this summer there's going to be a summer program for younger kids with a wide variety of sports from table tennis to flag football to uh, uh, baseball and soccer. And then we play at the varsity level, we have a cross country team. And we and in the fall sports will be uh, cross country football, eight man football, uh, co-ed soccer, and, <clears throat> and the girls will be in the gym playing volleyball. And then we have girls and guys, um, JV and varsity basketball in the winter, and in the springtime baseball and fast pitch softball. And then the junior high sports, uh, they play, they tend to play complementary seasons. So like this is soccer season coming up for junior high as soon as basketball ends. So yeah, there's sports all the time down there. Well, that's good though. I mean, yeah. as Joe and I talked, when I, you know, several months ago, sports <clears throat> started in 1960 and sports still happening. Joe. Yeah. Definitely, yes. And yeah. uh, maybe more than ever, but that's yeah. good. You know, to go, to just to go back about what you're talking about, the, uh, the, the church and everything, and, and not church, but the fire station, was that, was that an afterthought or was that something that you, they really, the, school, the city of Pacifica really wanted to do at that time? Well, I would, I would have to feel that they indeed did want to do that. I know that there had been talk for w quite a while at the old um, location on Adobe was uh, pretty hard to access. It was very, very small. They wanted to have a larger facility and uh, so I, I think there was genuine interest in that. And as it turns out, um, at the time, we didn't envision the growth that would happen for the school. I wish we had that property back now, frankly, <laughs> but, uh, but we are glad the fire station is there too. Well, now, so. you talk about the property, uh, th really there's much more than what the eye can see because if you go yes. back up on the hill, please explain how that works. How much land is actually up there? There's about 
27 acres on, on the hillside, and a lot of it is extremely steep, and it's heavily wooded with eucalyptus, and David mentioned the uh, poison oak that is always there. And uh, so the, the part of the property that is used is the flare out at the bottom uh, where it flares out toward uh, Seville Drive, and uh, those buildings are quite visible even from Lindemar Boulevard. And uh, so that still houses the old academy building, houses kindergarten through fourth grades. And then we have some teacher residences on that property as well. And you also live on that property, do you, do I you not? Do. I do. And I, have you lived there ever since you came to Pacifica? I have lived on that property since 1963. Oh, so. okay. Isn't that cool? We thought Colorado was beautiful and, and a place you'd never want to leave, but I, I think we've been convinced that uh, California has a lot of, uh, <laughs> uh, of beauty as well. And, and that's so, really nice to yeah. be able to do that, though. It is. Now, going back to talk about the, uh, the merger, how did that happen with the merger of the two schools, uh, David? Well, the, the Highlands High School was um, having trouble finding facilities for, for this, what would become this school year. And so the pastor there approached me about uh, whether I was aware of any, any uh, facilities available. And I just um, suggested kind of in passing that maybe we should just do the high schools together. And so that started a conversation that led to putting the two schools together this fall. And it's worked out pretty well so far. Hasn't it has. It? It's been challenging, but it's been very worthwhile. And um, it's, it's allowed us to, to double the academic program. Um, several AP classes have been added. Um, twice the arts program, twice the theater program. Uh, and so it's you been mentioned a good thing. you bus them over here to the school too, right? From yeah, Highlands runs a bus um, every morning, 7.30, they leave San Bruno and show up promptly at 7.45 in, in Pacifica for the start of the day, so oh my. yeah. Now, Joe, looking back those uh, 40 years, <laughs> uh, from the time it started, you really got here in 63 to now. Right. Has things progressed the way you liked this, Sino, or did you think it, things would never get to, to maybe a full-blown school there? Well, it would depend on which time in that developing uh, history that you had asked me that question, uh, whether what I force, would foresee happening. Um, I, I didn't limit what could happen in my thinking, and uh, I'm very happy that the school has progressed to the point that it has. And we anticipate further growth as well. And uh, the time may come that we wish even more we had more of that level, that <laughs> beautiful level property down uh, across the boulevard from where I live. So well, you don't think that you would do away with the sport field, do you? Or would you no. add on to that? No. We, in, in the layout of the uh, buildings that we have, we have tried to consistently maintain that area of the field which is, is best for combined use of uh, soccer and baseball and, and the other outdoor activities. And uh, uh, we would be very, very reluctant to uh, build on any more of that. Yeah, when I was down there one day, David and Joe, we, remember the pillars that St. Peter's oh, yeah. had years ago <laughs> and, they, and they stored them on your property? You can't see them now, but they're actually still there, are they not? Yeah, well now the truth is out. You've <laughs> let it out. <laughs> They, they are. Uh, they are back close to the creek and some have been uh, uh, grown over by the brush that uh, always comes up very quickly, the creek willows and a, a variety of uh, vegetation. And then some of them were even partly buried in, in soil so that bush grows out of that as well. So in some ways we're glad they create a little bit of a barrier for portions of the creek that are um, have quite a precipitous drop off from the top, and so it, it helps to uh, to create a safe, uh, a little bit safer environment. Actually, that, so. yeah. I remember walking over there and, and, or driving down there for years yes. and seeing those the right. pillars there. And they had high visibility for a long time. They did, didn't they? Not. Yes. Yeah, and and yeah. now now. You can't see that at all. That's you know, right. another view that you have from your, your property there, as you're driving down or you're standing on your property, you, you can look up and you can see the tunnel being built. Yes. Have you had a chance to just look up there and admire that, that thing being going up? It looks, yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. structure. It really is the arching of, of the roadway that will approach the entrance of the tunnel from the uh, Pacifica side. It is. It's a very imposing structure. 
Yeah, no, I, I drive by and, and I see that, and it's, uh, it's, it's really neat and everything. Right. You know, and, and going back and, and talking about when, when you first came here, Joe, you, you came in strictly to be the minister of, of the school and see that things got off the ground. Is, am I correct in, in that? Uh, that's a, a pretty accurate description, yes. I, I was, uh, at that point, pretty much the only man instructor, maintenance person, and a combination of, of a number of things. And so they, they were very challenging times, and, uh, but very rewarding as well. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. Now, when, when David, when you, 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 you have a sister, as I recall, do you not, or did you, both of you? <laughs> I have five sisters. You have five sisters? <laughs> oh, you're the only boy in the, in the, in the bunch then, huh? One older brother. One older boy. And so they all were, went to school there at the yep. same time then? Well, yeah. all did, yes. Oh. More or less at the same time. Well, yes, you have to qualify the same time. The oldest ones were on and out uh, by the time the youngest came uh, of school age. Oh. So, yeah. Am I missing anything about the history of uh, Whitefield, Pillar of Fire Church, uh, Alma High School? Is, this, is there some hidden secrets that I'm not uh, aware of now that we should expose? You know, I, I really can't think of anything. Um, and uh, we, we welcome any questions about any aspect of it. So. Well, I have to really say it's been a pleasure working with you two gentlemen over the past six months doing the stories and putting it together and just really highlighting the history of not only Whitefield, but really Alma High School as well. So it's, it's been right. fun for me to do that, and I really appreciate working with you guys. Right. So well, thank we, you very much. Thanks. We have appreciated you as well, <laughs> and, and also the, the, the fact that uh, those 10 years of use by the city for uh, sports, we, our hats are off to the people who gave lots of volunteer time to put in those ballparks. And uh, we know that there were people out there that there was a lot of grunt labor that took place to make that a possibility. And because of being in an organization that has uh, been characterized by the same kind of production, we, we appreciate that. And I, so we, our hats are off to the memory of the people that made that possible. So. Well, you know, that's, I appreciate that too. And speaking from the sports community, I, that's really appreciation. Well, that's about all the time that we have today. We want to thank our guests for joining us. And remember, if you want to get involved with the Pacifica Historical Society and our many, many projects, our address is Box 252, Pacifica, California, 94044. And we have a website that you can go to, and it's pacificahistory.org. And the phone number is 359-5462. Thank you very much for watching the show.